in the middle of doing some culture work. We actually sell cultures for $25 a plate if anyone's interested. I have orders coming in every week. But I want to talk to you guys about the schedule of how my business works and how important it is, is, is to stay on track with your culture work. This, uh, a lot of people think you need real sterile conditions. That's not really true. What, what's really important is that you have a really good flow in and you work in front of that and you, and you have sterile procedure. We keep all of our cultures in the fridge. So we have all of our test tube masters just in there and we have about probably about 73 strains right now and we grow maybe about 12 of them every year and I'm always growing different stuff all the time so for our schedule I'm in here every week and I'm making plates so I'm, I'm always expanding test tubes two plates to get those started and then those plates I'm getting expanded into production plates so we'll expand a plate between maybe seven to 15 plates depending on the species that I want to grow and because we grow seasonal we have to keep uh, we have to keep a production of, of warm weather and cold weather so that I can make adjustments based on how the season is developing so right now we're expanding our enoki and king oyster King oyster grows a little bit slower, so I like to get that started early in the year, and I usually do two waves of production. So I have some jars right here, and then these were these were done, I believe, on the 9th, December 9th, and they're just starting to colonize. You guys can see that. So those those jars I would expect for king oyster take about a month to grow, and on average I. I usually anticipate about three weeks for plates to grow. So we're always thinking three months in advance. So right now I'm working on our mid-April production and the stuff that I have in jars, I'm hoping that will start going in the greenhouse kind of April 1st. And then the stuff that I'm planting right now, we're starting to expand. Uh, I'm gonna be working on a couple different Horatian species. So this is a Coloroids. This is a, uh, a branch-like, Horatian species compared to lion's mane. We have this. This is our wild clone from Portland, Maine. So we grow these two side by side. I already know this is such an awesome strain for us. This is a cold weather strain, so we want to be growing this just up to peak summer and then start growing it again around like end of August. And then I'm going to be playing around with some, uh, some Nomiko. I haven't really played around with this too much. And then our, our go our go to strains is our pearl oyster. 050 and we have a blue oyster strain here in 008. So those will hopefully be going in the greenhouse kind of mid to end of April and then all of May will benefit from that. So for, for us every week we're doing plates and then we're making jars every two weeks or so. We're trying to do spawn every 10 days or so just to get a nice rotation and you know if I'm throwing out spawn bags because I made too much it's not really that big of a deal. So I have a shiitake run here right now. This is all done on sawdust. So I have more than I need. We're going to be playing around with some shiitake at the beginning of April and these will be going in the greenhouse. So this is all uh, 3782. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a strain that I have. Uh, if you've been talking to T.R. Davis, he likes to grow 3790. I don't have that strain yet, so this is just what we're playing around with. I actually haven't grown shiitake for, uh, it's about three years now, and I'm kind of interested to, to play around with it again. So I'm doing some 10 pound blocks, and those are in the sterilizer, and I'll be expanding this spawn out uh, probably in a few days. So that's, that's kind of an update of what's going on right now. And we, at the point of my business, we're going through about 80 plates every two months or so. And a lot of that is because we're selling plates. And we only sell those for $25 a plate. So if you guys are interested, hit me up with an email, bcallow at wtfmushrooms.com. 
Uh, I'm also interested in unique strains, so if, if any of you guys have something unique that I don't have then on my list, uh, I'd be interested in trading as well. So you just have to let me know what's going on with, with your culture library. And really, um, keeping cultures uh, healthy and expanding it out to production, it's not really that complicated, but it does take good technique. And I like to do everything in this lab. This is lab one. This is what we like to use primarily for our spawn and cultures. But we'll use this for overflow, for production, if, if we have, if we need the space. So, hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you guys have any questions, by all means, just leave questions in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them when I have some time. But this is, this is our process. This is pretty standard, but there's obviously lots of different ways to do it. Anyways, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.